Hi everyone, it's MJ the Fellow Actuary and in this video I want to talk about the Gumbel copula. Now Gumbel was a German statistician who was very much anti-Hitler and he kind of got kicked out of Germany because he was very much against the Nazi party. Anyway, history aside, uh, you'll see Gumbel comes up quite a lot with extreme value theory and other statistical things, but in this video we want to talk about his copula because Gumbel's copula is part of this Archimedean copula, um, which we discussed in the previous video. Essentially, we have these generator functions where we add the marginal distributions together, and then we take the inverse of the sum of them. Essentially, the big idea is taking space, state space 0 to 1 to 0 to infinity, adding there, and then bringing it back to 0 to 1 so that we have a probability. Gumbel's generator function is given by the following, negative lin f of x to the power of alpha, where Kendall's tau is equal to 1 minus 1 divided by alpha. So we're seeing that this alpha is the correlation parameter. Um, alpha lives between the values of 1 and infinity. We see that when it is equal to 1, we get the independent copula. Um, and we see that if we had to take it all the way to infinity, we'll actually get the minimum copula. And what this essentially does, or, or how this Gumbel copula flexes dependency, is through the following. It will have a upper tail dependency, but it won't have a lower tail dependency. And this is something that we can use when it comes to, say, uh, credit portfolios, specifically with credit losses, we'll see that their dependency increases during times of recession. So this is an application of the Gumbel's copula. And what we can do, I mean, I'm just explaining that in the bivariate case, you can take it all the way to the n-dimensional multivariate case, and that is essentially your formula. It's not that scary when you kind of break it down and you look at the components. Anyway, let's look at some pictures of the Gumbel copula. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be playing with the parameter alpha, and I drew these in a statistical program known as R. So you can see here, when we have it as 1, it is the independent copula, and it's kind of just this big block, okay? Nothing too, too special. But as soon as we start adding some sort of correlation, you can see how the graph starts to kind of take this, this shape. It almost looks a little bit like a stingray. The big idea or something that I want you to focus on is the upper tail, so the, the tail of the stingray over there. And you can see one of the ways to, to read um, these, these type of graphs is to also pay attention to the axis. So you can see here's from 1 to 1. Here we're going from 2 to 1. Here's 5 to 1, 15 to 1, 60 to 1. And that's just showing how much more weight is getting put in the upper tail. So we call this the stingray's tail. Um, well, it looks like a stingray. It's got its little wings, its little head there. I don't think anybody else calls it the stingray. Don't refer to it as the stingray in the exam. It's just how I kind of see this. But the big idea here is you can see that as we're changing this parameter, um, and you can see the minimum copula was full positive uh, dependency. So as we make alpha bigger, we're going to see more dependency between our marginal distributions. And what the Gumbel does is it allocates a lot of the weight in the tail. And that is something that we're seeing when we start increasing um, the parameter. You can see 60. That is a lot of weight over there compared to, to these other ones. And the reason why I say focus on these axes here is because otherwise the picture looks like very much the same, but when you realize that they're being scaled, you can actually see the, the effect of it. Anyway, this is very much a quick introduction to Gumbel's copula.